should you learn several languages at the same time? Is it going to be easier? Is it going to be more difficult? Should you wait until you have a certain level in your existing languages before adding any extra languages? And what is going to happen with those languages once you add the additional ones? My name is Esther. I am a doctor in language education. I have studied nine languages throughout my life to different levels of proficiency. And my specialization is actually multilingualism, aka the science of learning and using more than one language at the same time. So I'm really, really excited to answer today's question for you. In this video, I'm going to give you a bit of background on the science of how different languages work in the brain. And then we're going to look at different factors that you should consider if you are thinking about learning several languages at the same time, so you can decide if this is really a good idea for you or not. This video was requested by Susanna Jawad and several other students in my community who are trying to learn several languages at the same time and are not really sure how to go about it or whether even if it's a good idea or not. If you are struggling to learn a language and would like to ask me questions so that I can record videos answering those questions, I leave you the link in the description so you can join the community and have access to asking me any questions you may have. So the first question I usually get on this topic is whether it is possible to actually learn several languages at the same time. And look, I trained as a professional translator and interpreter for four years. And throughout those four years, I was learning five languages and I was perfecting another three. So it's definitely possible. But when I started to study the science of multilingualism, of learning and using several languages, I realized that there are a lot of factors that you need to consider when you decide whether you're going to go ahead and try to learn several languages at the same time, or whether it's actually better to wait and develop more advanced skills in those languages that you're already working on, and then add additional languages later on. So let's look at the science and let's look at those factors, because I think this is the key information that you need if you are considering whether learning several languages at the same time it's a good idea for you or not. Now, the field of multilingualism is actually a very new field of study. And for the longest time, we really believed that learning additional languages, so learning a third, a fourth, or a tenth language, was going to follow the exact same process than learning a second language, like a first foreign language. Now, it was only when we started studying bilingual people that we realized that those bilingual people learning additional languages were using slightly different processes and strategies that really deserved being studied in a separate field rather than including them in the more general second language acquisition field. Now, because multilingualism is such a new field of study, there aren't really a lot of very empirical models that we can use. But we have some theoretical models that I think are quite interesting. And there's one specific model that I want to share with you today, because I I think it's extremely relevant when we are discussing whether we should learn several languages or not. This is called the dynamic model of multilingualism. It was put forward in 2002 by two researchers, Herdin and Jessner. What is really interesting about this model is that it looks at the mind of a multilingual person as something very dynamic that changes over time, that evolves, and that it has a certain allowances, let's say, and that it cannot go over those allowances. And that's why I think it's really, really useful in this case. Inside this model, there are several factors that I really want to touch upon because they are important. The first one is the general language effort. The general language effort would be like the maximum allowance that your brain can dedicate to languages, be that to learning languages or to maintaining languages. So they're going to divide it into the language learning effort and the language maintenance effort. Why? Because once you already speak two languages, even when you speak one, there is an effort to maintain the language. But when you only speak one, it's easier to keep it. When you have two languages and one of them is a foreign language, there is an effort that needs to be made to maintain that language active if you want it to stay active. That's always a choice. And I have made a choice to keep certain languages passive simply because of this reason, because I don't have enough brain power to keep all of my languages active when I don't need them and I don't use them anymore. So there is a very respectable reason why you might decide that you don't want to put any effort into maintaining languages that you don't need anymore. But that is the topic for a different video. Now, going back to that, we've got the effort that it takes to learn a language 
language, the language learning effort, and we have the language maintenance effort. Those efforts are going to have to even out. If you have two, three languages that you feel confident about and you're just going to keep them, then all of your language effort is going into maintenance. It's just going to be maintenance effort. If in that system that right now seems kind of a stable, you add an additional language, you are going to destabilize that system because, again, according to this model, remember that you only have a fixed allowance of how much language effort you can put at any given point in time. Yes, you can develop this effort and you can increase your allowance over time, but at any given point in time, this model assumes that the effort is fixed, that you cannot increase it. So if you are going to devote half of your effort to learning a new language, then the other two languages may suffer or may need a different type of attention because you are now splitting that effort between learning and maintenance. So now imagine that you decide that instead of learning one language, you're going to learn two languages. Now your general language effort is going to be farther divided between learning one language, learning another language, and then maintaining the languages that you already have. And as we're going to see, there's quite a lot of interference and different kind of phenomena that can happen across these languages once you start having them all present in your mind. So managing all of that is taking brain power. I'm not saying it's impossible. I just want you to have that image in mind because I see sometimes the students are spreading themselves so thin, trying to learn so many languages at the same time. And then they come and complain to me because they say, well, I'm mixing them with other languages or I'm forgetting previous languages. And it's perfectly normal because you are taking resources away from those languages and putting them into the new ones. This is an image that I want you to have very present when you try to decide if you should learn a new language or not. So now let's look at the factors that you should consider if you are thinking about learning several languages at the same time, even after understanding a bit more about the science of it. There are three factors that I want you to consider. The first one are your goals. And I always go back to goals because when I ask students, what's your goal? And they say, I just want to be fluent in this language. Guys, that's not a goal. That's a dream. A goal is something much more specific. What do you need to do with the language and by when? That is closer to a goal. If your goal is to be able to speak with native speakers because you are moving to the country in six months, it's a very different goal from saying, I just want to have a general understanding of several languages because I enjoy it. Or maybe you just want to understand when you read because you want to read books in that language or you just want to watch videos and films in that language. So you're mostly interested in the listening, but you don't really think you will actually need to speak the language. And those are perfectly fine goals. So don't feel like when you learn a language you have to go for like the four skills all the time absolutely not but you have to be very clear about your goals and what is it that you want to achieve with those languages and by when now if you are in a rush to learn a language and to have a certain proficiency in the language for example you are retiring in one year and you want to move to Italy and you want to be able to speak with the locals then I would say don't get distracted with any other language focus on Italian just Learn Italian and if you want to learn French and Spanish and Chinese, you will have time to do that afterwards if you want. But now focus on the language that is the most urgent for you. Because if you try to learn several languages at the same time, you are splitting your attention. You are splitting your time. You are splitting your brain power. It's going to be slower. If your goal is to have a general knowledge of several languages and you are not in a rush and you are like, yeah, well, I'm doing this because I enjoy it, then it's actually quite fun to learn several languages at the same time. I've got another video coming up where I'm going to give you strategies specifically to do that. But it really depends on what is it that you want to achieve with the languages and by when. That is one of the key factors that you need to consider. The second factor is what we call your linguistic repertoire. And I know it sounds very nice and very French, but that's how we call it. So your linguistic repertoire, it's like the collection of languages that you already have and your history of learning them. How did you learn them? At what levels do you have? What skills do you have in them? How do you use them? What opportunities do you have to practice these languages? So we usually look at a person with all the languages they already have, and then we think, what is the best way to incorporate the additional languages? And as you can imagine, the more languages there are in the equation, the more complex the final combination is going to be. What I would say in this regard is that if you have several languages already at an intermediate or lower intermediate level, I would not add more. I would focus on developing those. And once you have those in a more advanced level, 
then I would add additional languages. Unless, as I said, you are in a rush, but then maybe you have to drop some of the ones that are at the intermediate level. So then you can focus and try to get an advanced level as fast as possible in the additional language that you urgently need. And as an example, when I was at university, uh, my first year, I actually learned German and I had very, very intensive German course. It was like 20 hours per week. By the end of the year, I was already at B2 level. It was great. But then I moved to Belgium where I was learning Dutch and I needed Dutch very urgently because I needed to be able to talk to the people around me. So I purposely decided to drop German for the time being and focus on my Dutch so that I could get a B2 level as soon as possible so that I could make the most of my experience in Belgium. And that's just an example. But then the languages, you can bring them back. When I came to Switzerland, I thought, oh, well, it's good I've got my German there because then I can bring it back. And it's very useful when you go to the mountains and everything is in German. The other consideration here with the languages is how close are the languages that you are learning? It's not just about the level, but it's also about the closeness. So when we say a language is very close to another, we mean that they're quite similar, like Spanish and Italian are quite similar. Spanish and Hungarian are not that similar. Actually, Hungarian is not similar to hardly anything apart from Finnish. But that is a huge factor as well, because what I realized when I was learning Italian and Portuguese is that it was actually much easier to learn both at the same time, considering my French was already very high and I'm a native speaker of Spanish. So adding Italian and Portuguese was relatively simple for me, but I decided to learn them in parallel so that I could actually benefit from the similarity of those languages. Languages. But again, don't try to imitate what I'm doing because remember, I was already in my six, seven language. I knew perfectly what I was doing and I knew the risks associated with it, which are that you're going to mix those languages much more. And in my next video, I'm going to explain how you can do that in a controlled way in case you still want to try. But I just don't want anyone to be like, well, Esther did it. I'm going to do it. Esther followed a very, very strict approach and it was hard. Don't think because they are similar, it's going to be easier. It's hard in a different ways. So I just want you to be realistic about this, please. And don't just go and try to copy what I did because those were very special circumstances that may not apply to you. So I just want you to see the factors and I want you to think how those factors can play a role in your specific situation. And now the third factor is my favorite. It's you, your personal circumstances and different elements within you that are going to determine whether you should do it or not. Now, these factors can be divided in internal factors and external factors. So let's look at them very quickly. Within internal factors, we've got motivation. What's your motivation for learning these additional languages? As I said, it's not the same, I'm going to move there in six months, where there is a clear, urgent need for the language. Then I just want to learn the language because I like it. And maybe in 10 years time, I might visit the country, right? So motivation is going to be key. Learning several languages, it's actually hard. So if you have a very good reason and a very good motivation to learn too, great. If you don't, frankly, reconsider. Now, Another element within your internal factors is going to be your prior language learning experience. When you've learned a number of languages already and you have reached a certain level of fluency in those languages, it's going to be much easier for you to add extra languages. I was telling you when I was a translator, I was learning all of these additional languages, but those were like my L7, L8. Like I had already learned so many languages. I had gone through the process. I knew what it was like. I had my own method, my strategies. Like when you are learning like your fourth, fifth language and you've already managed to become fluent in at least one or two, you already have your own strategies for learning, for maintaining the language, for using the language. So it's going to be significantly easier. And this takes me to the next element which is what we call metalinguistic awareness. And I know this is a bit of a complex term, but basically what it means is that you are aware, like awareness, of the metalanguage, not just of the language itself, but of how the language works and what the relationships are between the words and between the different parts in the sentence and even between the different languages and how you learn and how you regulate yourself and what you do when you're feeling not very motivated to practice and what the strategies you put in place in order 
other to be able to overcome that and to continue practicing when you are frustrated because you don't feel like there's any progress. All of that, it's something that it's developed throughout the process of learning languages and using them. And people that speak several languages have what we call an enhanced metalinguistic awareness, which basically means that they are particularly good at all of that. So yes, it's going to be easier for you to apply that to two new languages rather than just to one new language. And this takes me to the last internal factor that we've got. It's what research calls like a multilingual monitor, which basically means like a more advanced executive function that it's going to allow you to monitor the different languages better, to monitor the interference between the languages, which basically means that once you are able to speak several languages, you have a tiny bit of your brain that has developed a bit more. And we know from research that this is the case, like the brains of multilingual people are slightly different from the brains of monolingual people. And that extra little tissue that you've got in that specific region of the brain, it's going to allow you to switch tasks much faster and to monitor better your language production. So that means you're going to be able to separate your languages better. And because you have that, it's going to be easier as well for you to learn several languages at the same time than if you are a monolingual learner or you are barely at intermediate level in your languages and you try to add another one. It doesn't mean it's impossible. It just means that you're not going to be able to benefit from those, let's say, skills that people who speak already several languages have naturally developed and are going to be able to leverage when they're learning those additional languages. And finally, within the factors related to you, we have the external factors. Now, the external factors are equally important, but we're going to be looking more at whether For example, do you have access to quality instruction in the language? Do you have access to people that you can practice the language with? Do you have access to the culture? Do you have access to resources in the language? Do you have access to a social group that you could belong to if you could speak that language? And frankly, do you have the time and the energy that it takes to learn two or three languages at the same time? It's not because you're learning two at the same time that you're going to put the same effort and then progress at the same pace. If you're still going to have to put more effort to learn two languages than to just learn one. Those are elements that we really need to consider because learning a language is really challenging. And if you are lacking the social support or you are lacking the resources or you cannot find a teacher for that language or you simply don't have the time or the energy, then it's going to be much more demanding for you to try to learn two languages. And I would recommend that in that case that you stick to one, get to a good level of proficiency and then add an additional language. So should you try to learn several languages at the same time or not? Now, look, it really depends on you. It's up to you. It's your choice. My goal with this video was to give you all the information needed to make an informed decision. Eventually, it depends on what you are comfortable with. I have seen students that absolutely love it. I was one of them. I actually loved learning several languages at the same time when I was doing it. It does require a technical approach, right? So that you can mitigate the risks of losing your other languages or of mixing them. But it is definitely possible if you are applying the right strategies. Now, other students I've seen, they've tried and it has been detrimental for them because they couldn't really manage it and it was just frustrating them a lot. So I would say, look, I'm recording another video with a few strategies that I used and that are well recorded in research. It's very effective when you are learning several languages. I would say just if you are thinking about it, you may want to give it a try. And if after watching this video, you think that you still want to see how it goes, it just give it a try and you know, see how you feel about it. And if you are not feeling okay, if you're not feeling comfortable with it, you can always stop. You can always pause the language, take a break, focus on the other one, and then continue with the previous one. Languages are alive. Languages are never learned. Like you never stop learning a language. You never say, I know this language. I'll never learn anything new. I'm learning things in Spanish every time I go to Spain. So I think as long as you see languages as this alive creatures that are kind of gonna sometimes go to sleep and sometimes wake up and sometimes come with full force and sometimes just be very quiet in the background and that is perfectly fine you will be okay 
Now, if you find this video interesting, I strongly advise that you subscribe to the channel. I've got the other video with the practical strategies and how to learn several languages at the same time that it's coming very soon. So hopefully if you subscribe, the system will let you know once I publish it. And if you are interested and you want to join my community, remember it, I leave the link in the description. You can just join and uh, we'll give you access to me and to ask any questions you may have about language learning so that I can record future videos answering your questions. And in the meantime, I recommend that you watch this other video about how the brain actually learns languages.